Are the theories of the Big Bang and the nothingness before it lies? Or do scientists simply not dare to tell us the truth? We undertake a foray through the disciplines of science, the definitions of nothingness, and show you why your life is nothing more than an illusion, which is made for you by your perception and your brain. If we believe scientists our universe came into being by an event which we know as Big Bang, in a fraction of a second everything we see in the universe today shot out of a tiny point. Before this event, from which everything was born, there was supposedly nothing. But this is impossible, because nothing does not exist. It is quite simple to debunk this lie, because imagine nothingness for a moment. It is not possible. The first thing that will come into your mind with nothing is an empty space. But an empty space is not nothing, it is still a space with nothing in it, but the space exists. Perhaps absolute darkness and blackness still come to your mind. But darkness and blackness are also something and not nothing. In the cosmos, it is said that black holes consist of a dark matter, which is simply invisible. Dark matter fills wide spaces of the cosmos and is sometimes mistakenly equated with nothingness. But also the dark matter is not nothing, because it possesses demonstrably a big mass. Consequently, it too is something. The concept of nothingness remains a paradox. Even if we call it the perfect absence of something, the nothingness remains material and therefore something. We can nevertheless dare an approximate approach and think away successively everything, that is, the Earth, the stars, all other planets, light sources, dust, gases, your bodies, thoughts, etc. Finally, you would have to cease to exist to go on this train of thought, and even then it is questionable whether really nothing remains of you. The Lies of Science in quantum physics, scientists have long since come to the conclusion that nothingness does not exist. It is not possible even computationally, physically, and experimentally to create nothingness. But why then have cosmologists and astrophysicists claimed for almost a century that nothing existed before the Big Bang? Wouldn't it be much more correct and honest from the recognized natural science to say, we simply don't know what was before the Big Bang, because nobody can see there, travel there, or comprehend this state in any way, not even the Big Bang has been proven to date, and incidentally, this theory is currently being put to the test by the current observations of the James Webb Space Telescope. Possibly the Big Bang has never existed just like the nothingness before. When scientists talk about nothingness, there is often disagreement about what it really means. Just as researchers often cannot or do not want to admit that they do not know as much as they claim, they are also surprisingly unwilling to admit new theories and ideas. Thus, the idea of nothingness is still held on to, although it has long been proven that this is a lie. The paradox, does nothing exist? From the question you already recognize the answer, does nothing exist? Yes, you have surely recognized it immediately. If nothing exists, then it exists and is therefore something. Already philosophers of the antiquity have racked their brains about the question of the nothing. Parmenides of Alea was a pioneer of the Greek philosophers. He argued that nothing cannot exist. He believed that the very fact that we can speak of nothingness proves that nothingness is something existent and tangible. Thus, the word or designation betrays the nature of nothingness. It may be empty and quite different from matter or most things we know, but it is something. Otherwise, according to Parmenides, we would simply be speechless if we wanted to designate this nothingness. While Parmenides' thoughts on nothingness were widely accepted by other philosophers such as Socrates and Plato, Aristotle disagreed with this idea of nothingness. He believed that these opinions had hand and foot only within linguistic discussion. Nevertheless, the existence of emptiness as well as the fact of the non-existence as opposite to the existence proved that there must be nothing. We make a time jump to one of the smartest minds of the 20th century. Albert Einstein's concept of space-time came to a result which confirmed Parmenides' view. A nothing did not occur in his equations. It was illogical. Even if all particles were removed from a box, all electric and magnetic fields were shielded, and a theoretical vacuum was created, the box would still contain gravity, since gravity can never be shielded or cancelled. Next. Let's look into the world of quantum mechanics. 
because this is where we find the most coherent explanations of nothingness. Even at the lowest energy levels and in the world of the smallest particles, nothingness was not found. Instead, researchers measured an interesting quantum fluctuation. In the vacuum of the universe, quantum particles are constantly spontaneously appearing and disappearing. So at first there is nothing, then something appears, then the particles collide, neutralize and disappear. That is theoretically further nothing, and nevertheless, there is something. A neutral potential from which something can become. But where do the particles go? Where do they come from, and who sends them? Imagine this fluctuation of the quanta as a kind of carpet or a wall. This carpet or this wall can appear to us like a nothing, because the particles neutralize each other constantly and then disappear again. Behind the wall or behind this carpet, however, there could be another world or a previously unknown dimension. In quantum mechanics, scientists assume that matter can be decomposed until only information remains as the last building block. In this state, information is no longer a particle. Rather, it is the command how particles have to behave, which matter they form, or not, when they appear and how they disappear again. All thought models to quantum physics come to the same conclusion. Even if you remove everything from the universe, this mysterious quantum fluctuation remains. With it, the conclusion is obvious that this fluctuation was also present before the beginning of our universe. It is energy neutral and does not form matter, but this fluctuation is not nothing with the best will. It is a potential, a primordial ground in which all possibilities are contained. Scientists are perplexed. In physics and cosmology, there is a dispute between astrophysicists and quantum mechanics since decades. The astrophysicists who deal with the big phenomena like stars, planets, and cosmic nebulae do not like the ideas of the world of quanta. In quantum space, many things are undefined, fuzzy, and thousands of possibilities exist without concrete evidence of one thing or the formula that is correct and describes everything. We may need to explore the mysteries of nothingness and possibly other dimensions to truly understand what is going on in space and time, or what existed before space and time. The laws of quantum mechanics are mind-boggling, including the fact that matter does and does not exist simultaneously. Matter is formed from quanta that go from a wave state to a particle state when someone measures or observes them. The particles go back to the wave state when this measurement fails. This would mean that matter dissolves into an undefined potential when no one is looking. One of the most confusing quantum principles is the Heisenberg uncertainty principle, which is often explained as meaning that the position and motion of a subatomic particle cannot be reliably measured beyond a certain limit. Quanta can be decomposed into still smaller particles. Some of these are still measurable and behave within known and measurable parameters. Other particles, however, behave unpredictably and strangely. They are neither graspable, determinable, nor certainly measurable, but they exist. This means at present that we cannot get to the origins of the matter at the root fully. Possibly at the borders of the Heisenberg uncertainty, even further physical dimensions and worlds reveal themselves, which go far beyond what we can imagine or describe scientifically at the moment. This kind of uncertainty already drove Albert Einstein to reject quantum physics all his life. He was the first to discover the quantum or photon as a building block of matter, and he also received his Nobel Prize for it. The Wheeler-DeWitt equation tries to solve the problem of fuzziness by describing the whole universe as a wave function. The wave function describes the probability of finding the universe in a particular state at a particular time. The equation removes time from the equation and treats the universe as timeless. The catch of the theory is that the universe remains static in it. Outside the dimension of the time, it cannot be explained at the moment why the universe changes, grows, and with it also objects or living beings in it are subjected to constant changes. Moreover, it is not clear how the wave function of the universe should be interpreted or how it can be tested experimentally. Another candidate that tries to explain reality to us is string theory. Here, tiny strings of mass and energy serve as the fundamental building blocks of reality. So far, the equation works out too, 
and in fact string theory can almost perfectly unify quantum mechanics and the physics of large-scale phenomena. But hold on tight, because this unification has an interesting aspect. We have to add a whole six more dimensions to our known four dimensions of space consisting of length, width, and height, as well as time. This would mean that we live in a ten-dimensional universe, of which we know only four and already have difficulty understanding these four. Perhaps it would help to know the other six dimensions, but where are they? What do they look like? And how can we contact them? At this point, think of the carpet of quantum fluctuations and the particles that behave so strangely that no physicist can measure or describe them. These could be hints and portals to such dimensions. According to string theory, some of these dimensions are very strange in nature and exist in coiled microform within space-time. Can you imagine this, and if so, where are these dimensions? Let us share your ideas in the comments. Let's take all these ideas together and ask, once again, the questions. What is space? What is time? What is the universe? Where did it come from, and how did it come from nothing? It is possible that our universe is a bubble subject to an eternal cycle of being born, existing, and passing away. There is evidence that another cosmos existed before ours, and there is even evidence that our universe is not the only bubble. There could be many universes, some beside, behind, or in front of ours or others hidden in our universe, in other dimensions and times. Some scientists, scholars, or even Eastern religious views even go so far as to say that the universe is not real. Even quantum physics is getting closer and closer to a world that is nothing more than a damn well-made hollow projection. The world is created in your perception, and everything out there and in front of you that looks real is nothing more than an illusion. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel.